The Breath of Fire series is something I've never quite had the chance to play through. I did play the fourth back when I was a whiny teenager, but for some reason I just left it at that. It's now 2019 and things are about to change. I am going on a Breath of Fire binge. I'll be starting here with Breath of Fire 1 and working my way up to Breath of Fire 5. To show how serious I am, here's a graphic that I made. Making this logo took way too long to simply have it appear on a screen for a few seconds. So this bad boy is going right down here for the rest of the review. Okay, so Breath of Fire 1, where it all started. This was Capcom's first attempt at an RPG and to put it simply, it shows. This was the time where other game developers were producing some of the greatest RPGs of all time. Breath of Fire 1 is not even close to this league. The first in the series was released in 1993 and received some positive reviews from critics in both Japan and North America. I guess you could say that it hasn't aged well as there are loads of glaring flaws. So let's take a look. Breath of Fire does not waste any time getting into things. Like the other Breath of Fire games, you play the role of Ryu, a descendant of the Light Dragon Clan, which gives him the unique ability to turn into dragons. At the start of the game, Ryu's village is burnt to the ground by an evil organization known as the Dark Dragons, who also kidnap his sister, Sara. Initially, Ryu sets out to save Sara, but soon gets involved in stopping the Dark Dragon Clan from conquering the planet. The main narrative is far from strong, the limited dialogue really limits the depth of the lore and plot and most of the time I didn't really care why I was going from A to B. But that's to assume that I knew how to get to B, or in fact what B was at all. I don't think I have ever been so reliant on a walkthrough in my life. I always try to get through my RPGs without referring to any guide or facts, it's just my style but there was no way this was going to happen this time around. At so many points I had no idea what was expected of me, thankfully I had a shortcut to a or walk through on my phone for quick access, but I cannot imagine the pain our forefathers went through without this luxury 25 years ago. Breath of Fire 1 establishes quite a few series conventions, with Ryu and Nina as the lead party members an example of this. The two will eventually team up with six other companions who tag along for their own reasons, many of which are pretty unconvincing. What each character will bring to the party is a unique field skill that will allow the party to progress through points that they previously couldn't. Karen, for instance, can open locked doors while Ox can use his strength to smash through walls. This mechanic requires your party to revisit previously explored areas. This this works well as it gives you a reason to explore the world multiple times and hunt high and low for the many secrets hidden throughout. But this of course comes at a cost and that is the insane encounter rate. Just imagine walking down your local coffee strip only to be attacked by a bunch of jerks every two steps. You just wouldn't want to leave the safety of your house, would you? This is exactly how I felt in Breath of Fire. There was a big wide world to explore, but I wasn't entirely motivated to explore it due to the fear of being jumped by a random monster. Fortunately, at least one of the developers at Capcom had half a brain and a tad of empathy. There is this easily obtainable item that completely stops random encounters for a limited amount of time. Yes, opening multiple menus every 30 seconds to use this item was annoying, but it was the lesser of two evils. Despite this, the fact is that most of the enjoyment I found in this game was through diverging from the main narrative path, finding secret areas and obtaining powerful upgrades. To me, this was the strongest part of Breath of Fire. Simplicity is the perfect way to explain the gameplay in Breath of Fire. This turn-based system pits four party members against a series of enemies with the options of performing basic attacks, spells, defend and item commands. And as with other games in the series, Ryu can also turn into dragons which is pretty cool. But there are a load of issues that plague this system. For starters, your party members are incredibly unbalanced. Characters like Karn confuse into other party members for a massive stat increase and kick ass at all times. Other characters like Gobby are statistically weaker and can only use his spells while underwater which is a very small portion of the game. As a first time player I can really only see one viable party composition and this was disappointing. The gameplay offers a fair bit of challenge at times, particularly at the start of the game where some of the boss battles will take forever. But the thing is that obtaining Ryu's optional dragon forms and Karin's optional fusions will turn this difficulty upside down, making boss fights a complete pushover. This is particularly highlighted in the final battle. If you've used a walkthrough or somehow pulled a magic bunny out of your ass and found Ryu's final form, you'll beat the final boss with no issue at all. If not, well, I would probably have more chance beating Battletoads. 
The lack of character balance and complete reliance on Ryu's and Khan's forms holds the gameplay back big time and it's hard to believe that Capcom thought this was a good idea prior to release. The one interesting feature for me was that once the boss's health bar has been depleted they don't actually die. Instead they have a set amount of additional health and slightly change their attack patterns. While this can feel annoying and cheap at times it does add an extra element of intensity especially during the tougher battles. Despite all its shortcomings, Breath of Fire at least looks pretty good. While the sprites aren't as detailed as other powerhouse RPGs on the system, I can't fault the way they look. The isometric view in battles for instance was a good choice. However, the music that plagued my ears is a completely different story. Now, I've read quite a few reviews for Breath of Fire and some people have been praising the soundtrack. I really want to know what they've been smoking because this couldn't be further from the truth. Never have I heard a soundtrack filled with more repetitive, annoying tunes. I I can gauge this by the amount of times my wife came into the room and kindly asked me to SHUT THAT GODDAMN MUSIC UP to which I had no problems complying with. You get about 5 minutes of the music in this review, I had about 30 hours of it. It still haunts me. Now I've been complaining about a few issues up until this point but I've saved the best to last. The item management. There are so many issues here. For starters, each item name is limited to only having a certain amount of characters. That means that it's very difficult to know what an item does based on its name. What is a W ant? William's antenna? What is a Umbel 3? Mr. Black 3? What is a Beeston? A boner station? But that's not even the worst of it. The game actually forces you to manually arrange your many items. With the amount of items that you'll accumulate this will take a long time and you'll have to do it regularly if you like any kind of order. But wait! There's more! Many items allow you to stack them. For instance, if you buy 9 herbs, it will only take one item spot. However, if you have one slot with 4 herbs and another slot with 4 herbs, there is no way to combine them into a single slot. I feel that if I were a video game teacher, I would make my class play this game as an example of what not to do. Again, I just can't comprehend how anyone thought this would not be an issue. If I'm going to binge on the Breath of Fire series, I've got to start somewhere, right? As someone who has never played this game before, without the nostalgia goggles, it is very hard to find much worthy of praise. Breath of Fire is plagued by many issues that RPG fans rarely encounter in the modern day. The lack of direction given to the gamer is just ridiculous at times, forcing me onto a walkthrough more times than I could count. I spent a lot of time walking around aimlessly and the repetitive music and crazy encounter rate made this even more unbearable. And who could forget the appalling item management and unbalanced characters. The only real enjoyment I found in Breath of Fire is in the massive world that provides loads of secrets to find. With so many amazing RPGs on the Super NES, it's hard to recommend this to anyone. I am now one fifth of the way through my Breath of Fire binge and I can only hope that things get better from here. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. If you liked this, hit like and subscribe for more RPG content and stay tuned for my Breath of Fire 2 review coming soon. See you then.